Hello, my name is Peter Dell, and I would like to introduce you to the Cart, the ultimate all-in-one flash cartridge for your favorite Atari 8-bit computer. So let's go back in history. In 1983, the most awesome computer you could get, it looked like this. The Atari 800XL. It comes with 64K of RAM and a cartridge slot where you can put in up to 16K ROM cartridges. Yeah, immediate loading time, power up, and here you go. So, at that time, a high-speed disk drive, it looked like this. The 1050. Powerful 19 kilobaud per second. And 128 megabytes, they would have looked like this. Mm, not fully, well, this is 1K, so we need to add some more like this. Well, I tried and ultimately I realized that PowerPoint simply doesn't have enough pixels, neither has my screen. So to give you an idea, it would be 4096 by 4096 pixels, each a K of ROM. So now going for the card, we are only 30 years later. In 2013, the most awesome computer you could get, it looks like this. The Atari 800 XL. And this is how a high speed disk drive looks like today. The Lenovo ThinkPad disk drive for the Atari. Connected via a high speed SIO to USB link with the SIO port of your Atari. And this is how 128 megabytes look like today and shortly you will see them in action. So, this is your Atari 800 from 1983 with 64K of RAM. If you remember you had 1400 single density disks or maybe 16,000 cartridges that you bought off the shelf, well, you can put them all on this cartridge, which comes with this button and plugs into this cartridge port. So, let's power off the machine, plug the card in carefully, power the machine on and wait for Windows to boot. Oh no, it's not Windows, it's powering up immediately. So, what you see is the so-called extended menu of the card. It comes with a help that you can see when pressing help. You can control it either with the keyboard or with your joystick. It has a list of result entries. It has several tabs called genres where you can assign your entries. So here are all my games. Here are all entries from all genres. And of course it would not make any sense to have some kind of scrolling if you have 16,000 entries on that card. So this is why the card comes with the extended menu and Google-like search. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you remember any part of a name or the title of a game, you can just type it in, no matter whether it's in the beginning or the middle or the end of the name. So, if I remember it was something like uh, Airball. Ah, look, there is an Airball, or I can type double L, and we'll also find Airball. And if I'm not sure uh, how many cards to fit on a cartridge, I remember I had something that was called one Five O, and ah look there it is and I can even scroll while it's searching so if I scroll down so what can I see I can see that there are actually more than 15,000 ROMs on that cartridge that's amazing okay but back to airball I wanted airball I press return and airball starts okay I could go on playing but I want to go back. And as you can see, Airball, for example, is a game that is reset proof. And this is why you have the button of the card. Because you can press that button, press System Reset, and immediately you are back in the card menu. Okay, but now let's show how we can get some stuff on there. So, this is my website. 
On my website you can find the program that helps you creating all these nice cartridge images and menus with the Card Studio. The Card Studio is a Java based software that you can find on my website on the Atari Tools The Card Studio. The online help is available online and here you also find the download link where you download a zip file and in that zip file you find a jar file. I have already downloaded that jar file and put it on my desktop. So here it is. When I double click the card studio jar, the card studio opens up. Initially you have an unnamed workbook. A workbook comes with a title, the type of the flash module, which by default is the largest the card and by default uses the extended menu and has some suggestions for genres. You can change all that if you like and create your own cartridge project or workbook. So I have of course prepared one. This is my standard test project where you see how many different entries are there. There is a title, there is the assignment of a genre that I can change here. Here is the file name on the disk. Here is the content type, that means what type of file is it? Is it an 8K ROM? Is it a 16K bank switching ROM from OSS? Is it an Atari Max bank switching ROM with 1 megabyte? All that is important to know. You can choose whether this entry appears as a single entry or as multiple entries. The latter is important if you have, for example, a compilation of games that is already on one cartridge and you want to emulate that card within the card. Yeah, and here's the information if banks are already assigned. Yeah, the card is organized in banks. Here you like to know it from Defrag. Is the actual content layout of the card. This is merely for information. Okay, now let's add something here. I can choose add entries. Alternatively, I can just drag and drop something on that card. So in this specific case, Airball is not yet on that card, so I can drag it here and I get a new entry for Airball. It has automatically recognized the title and that is an XEGS 128 kilobyte ROM. This is because the Card Studio comes with a built-in database of many known ROMs, so you don't have to figure out the content type yourself. Okay, this is of course a game. So, what do I have to do? I save this one, just to make sure. Now I have to get this information somehow to the Atari. To that end, I can export it. And the easiest way to do it is, if like I have, you have a CU to USB connection, you export it as one large ATR file. Okay, it asks me where to put them. And I save it, it's already there, I confirm to replace and now it saves the image. Okay, we are done in the card studio. What do we have to do now? Well, we have to insert the disk image into the disk emulation of SPECUT, the free open source disk emulation for the Atari. So I choose this one, I choose the ATR that I have exported and you can see from the size it's actually 128 megabytes in size. Okay, emulation is online, disk is inserted. Now let's check what we have to do on the Atari side. Okay, I have powered up my Atari again with the card plugged in. It starts with the extended menu. And what I have to do, I have to go to the flasher software that can read the data from the PC and flash it onto the flash ROM of the card. To that end, I press escape and I end up in this so-called simple menu. Here you can manually configure the internals of the card. We don't want to do that. We want to select the flasher by pressing F and start it with return. What you have just heard is that the SIO speed has increased from the standard 19,000 to one, over 120,000 kilobyte. Okay, I want to program the cartridge, so I press 1. It asks me for the drive number. I have inserted it in the PC in drive 1. 
It loads the header and gives some information of the title, when it was, when it was exported and how many banks are used. So 16,000 banks, 8k each. And it asks me if I want to perform an incremental flashing. And of course I want, because flashing 128 megabytes would take quite a while, even with that high speed uh, SIO connection. So with the standard connection it would take 18 hours. With the high speed connection it, uh, it is much less, so about 2 hours. Uh, but yet I want to use this feature of incremental flashing, that means flash only those parts that have changed. So I press yes. And to make sure it asks me, do you really want to start? Yes, I do. And now it reads the data. First of all, it loads some checksum information yeah, to make sure which parts of the card have changed. Now it, for every block of the card, it erases the actual content and replaces the content. Here you can see the number of the sector. Yeah, if you look in SPECQT, you can also see which sectors are um, red. And here you see from 15 to 2960, so everything in between has been skipped because it simply has not changed. So the Airball module that I've added has 128 kilobytes uh, ROM. And this is now the actual payload of the game. Now it uh, skips the rest of the sectors and now it updates the uh, directory where of course the new title should also show up. Finally it programs a checksum. And we are done. So from here I can either use that start cartridge button or you can just press the magic button and reset. And we are in. And if I now type air I find the airball here. Yeah? Just to show you this is a different cartridge than I had before. Yeah? And here airball was actually missing before. Yeah? This is why it has added it. Okay. That was the most easy way to get something onto the card. Uh, incremental flashing helps to keep the times low, but of course if you add much content or if you flash the card initially it may take longer. If you don't have an SIO to USB, but you have maybe an SIO to SD or this kind of SIO to USB, which has a USB stick, then you cannot use these 128 megabyte large ATR files because they are simply not supported by these devices. But that is not a problem. The uh, Card Studio can export uh, these ATRs in split mode. Yeah, that means instead of one large ATR, you get nine small ATRs um, that you can insert one after the other in the flasher. I will show that in a separate session. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this introduction. If you are interested, you can contact me or one of the people that will follow in the end. And um, yeah, see you in the next part of the tutorial. Bye!